So servlets is another one of our topics that can be a little bit difficult to get set up. And so I want to go through a very basic example of how to set up uh, Tomcat and running servlets. <clears throat> there are other servlet engines besides Tomcat, and I don't really care which one you use, but Tomcat is pretty simple to set up and has really good integration with your uh, IDEs. There are really two basic ways to do this with Tomcat. One of them is to install Tomcat, start it yourself so it's running, and within your IDE, create a, a WAR file and copy that WAR file into Tomcat, a Tomcat directory on your own. The second way to do it is to run Tomcat within your integrated development environment, Eclipse or IntelliJ, and have the IDE deploy it. So I'm going to be do going with the second version, and I'm going to be using IntelliJ in this particular case. So the first thing that you need to do is download Tomcat. I downloaded Tomcat 8 and this particular release, and it just installs as or it downloads as a uh, zip file, and I had the zip file just moved it into a location on my machine. So I didn't do anything from an install standpoint or anything like that. I just downloaded and unzipped Tomcat. Then I went into my IDE and created a project. I'm going to kind of go through that a little bit for you. I've already actually done it, but new project. And I chose Enterprise Java Enterprise as the type of project. Um, this was the SDK I already had. If you're using uh, if you're using Tomcat 8, you probably ought to have at least 1.8 and J2EE version 8. And then for your application server, if it's not in the drop down, which it probably won't be, you go here to new, um, pick Tomcat server, and then go through the process of setting it up. So these, uh, what's here for Tomcat home and for base directory are almost always the same. And this is the whatever <clears throat> folder the location of the folder that you ended up zipping, unzipping rather, and wherever you put that. So if you were to go into the path that you specify here, you'd see the bin file and the lib file and such files. So I'm not gonna do that, but you can do that, and then it will show up correspondingly here. The one other thing that you have to do is scroll down here and check the button for web application. Now, notice that I can choose, well, I was choosing between three and four. Um, I chose four. It created a web XML file for me, so I don't have to worry about that. And then you click next, you call it what you wanna call it, and then you finish. I called mine my web hello world. Notice that the location I put it in was in my Git repository folder. I went through the same process for Git as I've described in an earlier video. And a couple of things that you'll see that are specifically because you checked that web box is there's this out and there's a web. So any web components that you install, so that would be JSPs or HTML files will be saved uh, under this web uh, area here. So you do that um, by clicking on the web inf and selecting what file you want. Today what we're going to do is create an HTML file and a corresponding uh, servlet and the idea is that the HTML file will have a form that will post to the servlet.
okay? So this version of um, J2EE is, and, the, and WebXML ha uses annotations. So it's a little bit different than uh, adding the servlet information directly in the WebXML. So you might see two different versions of this. In fact, you are going to see a lot more of the second one where it's going directly in the web XML. But in this case, I'm not doing it that way. <clears throat> so first of all, I created a login.html file. And this is a simple HTML. It has, a, it has three inputs, which are, it asks for your login, it asks for your password, and it has a submit button that says that's titled a login. Then it has a form that wraps all of that. And the action on the form is servlet. That's the name of the servlet I'm going to create. I know I'm being really creative here on the naming conventions. And then the method that I'm going to use is post. So with HTTP, you have post and get, and you have other verbs as well. But typically when it's from a form, it's either post or get. When you do get, it takes the whole string and it puts it on the query string and it sends it through the URL itself. When you use post, it actually uh, creates um, attributes in the header of HTTP and sends it through the header so you don't see it in the URL. So that's the typical way that you would post data back. All right, so I'm going to create my servlet XML. Now, I created a package called simple servlet and then within that I have my servlet. What you're going to want to do is if when you're ready to create yours is if you have a package here, right click, go to new, come down here to servlet, type in the name of your server and the package and what the class is. Notice this little checkbox that we're using an annotated class. And when you do that, then it actually um, annotates the class. So in my case here, it has the package. It has these imports. I think almost all of these came with it. It has this annotation. Now, when it first put it out there, it just said name equals servlet. This is really super important. And why it doesn't include this, I don't know. but you need to add this extra part URL pattern and the URL pattern for it. I just used a simple pattern here of slash servlet. If you don't put that on there, it will never find it. No matter how hard you try, it will never find it. The other thing that I um, learned is that even if you're not going to use a get you need to have a get method, a do get method. That's what um, the servlet, uh, HTTP servlet is going to use to direct, direct you. If you don't have one, it for whatever reason doesn't work. Um, so I've created inside of my do post a pretty simple little piece here. It uses these param get parameter. These are the two fields that are within my login and they have the same name. Notice I have login and password. And in my servlet, I have login and password. Yes, case matters. And so you need to do that, put, put those in there. And then all I'm really doing is, is I'm just displaying them here. So <clears throat> fairly simple here. All right, now a couple of other things. Uh, you will, the way that you will run this is, see up here at the top now, it's showing Tomcat. Here's a server called Tomcat. If you come way down here to the bottom, to application servers, it'll show Tomcat here. When you're running Tomcat within your IDE, it is going to automatically start Tomcat, build a war, copy the war into the right place, explode the war, meaning unzip it, and then execute the uh, initial program or the, the index is basically what it does. There are some options here. So what we're going to do the first time here is 
because I'm going to click on this and just start it. If you look down at the bottom here, it might take it a minute or two. It's building my program right now. You're going to start seeing some of the console logging that you would typically see when, here we go, when Tomcat is starting. And then it ran the index. So if we go back here, if you notice, I think that I created this index.jsp. Otherwise, you'll just get a, a blank page. The JSP doesn't really do anything. If I click on it here, you can see I just have it writing something out here. But that's not all that critical. This comes up. Notice that the name here is this, uh, whatever the name of my project is, underscore war, underscore exploded. Here is where you would, um, I had that HTML file that I created called login.html. Here I would go uh, login.html. Yes, it's really super pretty. This is my HTML file. I'm gonna put in my login name. Hi there. My, my password and click login. Now when I do that, going back to the login file again, I have servlet as my action and post as the method. So what it should be doing is calling the servlet, it's named servlet, and executing the do post method. That's what we want it to do. So I'm going to click login here and it includes this information. So <clears throat> It's, I would suggest that you do put a little index.jsp in here first because it will at least test whether or not it's getting to the server. Everything is working okay. Um, if you're struggling to, um, like for instance, if this comes up, then you know that it's reading into that directory. But if you submit here, and this just gives you an error, it's probably because there's something wrong right here. It's not mapping this correctly. That's a pretty common thing. You will, if for some reason nothing works, you will want to look down through the console here and make sure that you're not seeing any errors in this process. So that's something to look at as well. So I hope this has been helpful to kind of get you started on servlets.